Hello, I'm Dr. David Royf. I was a chief surgical resident at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. It was on Saturday, the Hurricane Harvey had really started hitting its peak at that time. Um, rain had been coming down stronger than I'd really ever seen in my, my 33 years in Houston. And uh, I spent a lot of time outside just watching the rain come down and watching the floodwaters go up outside. And uh, it was around, that, around the evening of that day that we got a call from the emergency medicine physicians that a patient had just come in from a trauma. Uh, he had been out on an ATV uh, looking for family members, I believe, and uh, sustained a rollover accident and, and hit his head, and he was uh, showing concussive symptoms. But then when they, uh, when they scanned him, luckily they didn't find any, any injuries in the rest of his body, but they found a, um, a relatively large subdural hematoma on his brain, indicating a, a serious traumatic brain injury. I just realized he wasn't there. You know, I could just see that mentally, neurologically, he was talking, but he was not there. And having done a little bit of neurosurgery in the past and having done a lot of neuro exams, you just kind of look in someone's eyes and you could kind of tell. I talked to the family a couple of times. I told them that I had done these types of surgeries before, uh, but that it had been a decade since I had done this um, and that I was not a neurosurgeon, but that I thought I could do it. Apart from this being the most rare, austere, dire of circumstances, I wouldn't even consider it. But because we don't have any other options, and if we don't do anything, he's gonna herniate and probably have significant neurologic deficits, if not die, I think we need to do this. This is the only situation I would ever consider doing this in. We're gonna have to do something kind of crazy. We may, we may have to do something kind of crazy. I'd never been so nervous before a surgical procedure, you know, despite doing this already for being a resident for seven years, you know, I, I thought I'd seen everything by now. I think one of the ways to calm down, I think, is just to prepare adequately for it. So we talked to the operation. We talked about our instruments. We sat down and just, you don't need to do anything fancy uh, to, to prepare yourself for surgery. You just have to sit and communicate and talk and be a team. In these types of situations, you have to be able to be um, flexible and you have to be able to think outside the box, and you have to be willing to do that. And they were, and I think that's a testament to them. I'm a person of faith, and, and I prayed. I prayed a lot, before surgery, during surgery, after surgery. Then we got him back to the ICU, and then we watched him for the next few hours, and then, um, and then we finally got word that the Coast Guard was coming um, early that morning to pick him up when the, when the storm was taking a break. The most rewarding part of this experience for me has been just um, the knowledge that I could work with my friends and colleagues and uh, do something extraordinary that had never been done and have a, have a patient have a great outcome because of that. He just looks better and better each time. I mean, you could, if you'd see him walking next to you, you could never tell what he'd been through. It was a blessing to be part of that team. It really was. It wasn't like, oh, I got to be at LBJ. It was like, you know, I, I get to do this. I get to be part of something and work with people who are really fun and cool. And, and it's a blessing. All I did was my job. And I tried to do it the best of my ability. I think the attitude of the people at LBJ uh, is what made this a, a real possibility. And working at Harris Health and being part of an organization that has patients that have significant pathology, severe pathology, things that you don't see normally, things that are, well, that's even worse than the textbook a lot of times, simply because of either lack of access or, uh, or financial difficulties. I think the attitude that is built into a the Harris, Health Center, Harris Health system is one of, we have to figure out how to help this patient today. If everybody works together towards a common goal, then I think anything is possible. Mm -hmm.